I just fell down the stairs, and now we're off on a completely unrelated adventure. Unrelated adventure! It is Tuesday, which means it's Saturday for us. Yay, Saturday! No and, work. And someday I'm going to learn to look into this rather than this over here. Someday. Someday. I don't have to look. I have to look at the road. Yes. You have to pay attention to driving. I have to pay attention? And I have to pay attention to not falling downstairs. What are we doing, Ken? We are going to go look at a house. Woo! But it's a nice, bright, sunny Tuesday. It wasn't earlier. I was thinking that today was going to be just another crummy, cloudy day, but... See, I don't think cloudy days are crummy. I think cloudy days are great. I think Just like rainy days are great. I think any, everything in moderation. I don't like ten cloudy days, rainy days in a row. I like, I like some sunshine. So we've been looking at this house for a couple of months. My parents are not quite ready to put their house on the market yet. There are a few little odds and ends that they would like to do in the house before they put the house on the market, uh, which is understandable. They want to fix the, the, the bathroom fan and um, put up some, some corner molding and things like that just to make sure that they feel comfortable with the product that they are providing. But this house that we've been looking at for a couple of months now that we've all kind of gone, well, that one might be perfect uh, for, for all of us just dropped in price again and we all kind of went maybe we should take a look at it so we're taking a look at it so we're taking a look at it I'm really hesitant to take a look at this property I worry that we are going to fall in love with it and then not be at all ready to buy it and it's going to be sold before we have the opportunity to buy it on the other hand, we could look at it and we could decide that it's absolutely not for us, which is why we're actually taking a look at it, because it doesn't make any sense to sit here with with bated breath and with wringing our you know, wringing our, our hands together about this, this house that we are looking at, or we have been looking at, if it's not actually going to be, uh, if it's not actually going to be the right fit for us, so. And there have been cases in the past where we've found houses that we, from seeing pictures of it, have loved. And then we went and we looked at it and we're like, yeah, maybe not. There was this absolutely stunning house um, that's on the market still. That is an old um, nunnery. It started life as a nunnery and it's absolutely stunning inside. All these, all of this detail work and woodwork everywhere and these just little nooks and crannies it needs, but it needs a lot of work and uh we while we are not worried about work we're, we're just not it, it needs work that we don't know about like there's there's cosmetic work which is fine we have no problem with cosmetic work and making changes like uh paint or changing out light fixtures or um any or you know redoing a bathroom or a kitchen or but the problem is that it's some of the stuff like duct work or electrical work that we don't know and we um that can get really expensive really quickly or roofing even it needed a brand new roof roofing yeah and it's a it was a slate roof and i'm just not sure i mean we've dealt with asphalt and we've dealt with um metal roofing now <laughs> so while it's fine to, to get into new things. We it was there were just too many aspects of the house that were were question marks for us. Plus, we're looking for something with a little bit of land, and it was on three quarters of an acre in town. Um, and just looking at the property, it did not look like three quarters of an acre. Um, so now the house that we're looking at today is just shy of three acres, um, not as large as the the, the old nunnery, but it looks like it has some of the some of the other things that we were looking for in a house. So, we're going to look at it.
So how did it go? I think that it was nice, but it was a little small. And there wasn't enough usable land. I I can agree. I don't know... Th it being a little on the small side is not a problem for me so much as the... I have a problem with them not listing in the description how much of that land is usable. Because I think that that house it was supposed to have like three acres of property. And I, I think maybe two-thirds of it was wetlands. Yeah. And that's just not usable. I mean, the process of making wetlands usable land is not something that a homeowner should have to consider right away and if we wanted to do anything with that property we would have to we would have, we to, would have to put a lot of more work into it than we were just in, just in the land itself and not just in like cutting down weeds and and an overgrowth it's I liked the house. I thought the house was really, really quite pretty. Mm -hmm. A little small, but the layout was really cool. So the search continues. Mm -hmm. Now, fun stuff, funner stuff. Retail funner? therapy. More fun? We're at the outlets! Yay, Woo! outlets! And you say I woo too much. Well, it's, I don't know what. How else do you express excitement? Yay! Yay! Outlets! <laughs> that was very exciting. You seem very excited. You should know that he's the one who chose to go here. I don't know what she's talking about. It's not... This is not... This is not my doing. <laughs> he's the one who wanted to be here, so I don't know why he's all... He's playing all cool. Plausible deniability. Mm. Alright, let's go shop. Let's go shop. So, Ken? Yes? What did you end up getting? Pizza. Uh, broccoli, some Polish sausage, a meatball, and a lasagna roll. Nice. Jolene, what did you end up getting? A salad. <laughs> but that's only because it's the first course. All right, sir. Course two. Broccoli and cauliflower. It's roasted broccoli this time. The other stuff was raw and it wasn't very good. Whatever kind of steak this is chicken and a piece of sausage. The others was apparently kielbasa. Oh. And I got shrimp. And then a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Including some steak with some horseradish sauce. Mm-hmm. So, something amazingly, terrifyingly exciting just happened. <laughs> I just had my second heart attack of the day. First one was I, when I fell down the stairs. The second one was when I just played craps for the first time. Yay, craps! Ooh. Woo! I'm still shaky. I'm still shaky. Game. Now, to be honest, okay, so we went to the casino just to have the buffet as Ken's celebratory meal. He uh, wanted to go to the casino for the buffet because he just got a promotion. Yeah! Yeah, promotion! Woo! Um, so I asked him where he wanted to go to celebrate and he said the casino. I was like, okay, let's go to the casino, even though you work there. <laughs> and at, on our way out, out after dinner, he says, do you want to play something? Well, of course the answer is yes. <laughs> but she did not start on the craps table. No. Oh, no. I, I really like three card. Um, three card poker. Po well, yes, three card poker. I don't, I don't know any other game, really. Not really, anyway. Um, so... I said, well, if we can find a $5 three-card table, then I'm in. Let's, I'll play for a little bit. Well, I bought in for 35, 30, 30, 30, and I walked away about 20 minutes later, about, uh, I doubled my money, and I always think that if you can double your money in 20 minutes, it's probably a, a good thing to do. Um, so we're getting ready to walk out, having doubled my money. I'm going to keep saying that to remind myself, <laughs> and to remind Ken that... I am a wonderful three-card poker player. She is extremely good at three-card. I don't know where she gets her luck mm. from. Uh, yeah, I don't either, because it's, it's, it's luck. It's not luck, it's skill. I am that darn good, <laughs> sir. Excuse you. So, Ken has been talking for a long time. He's been he's known um, craps for a little over a year. The game craps. Other craps he's known for his lifetime. Um, no, I've known craps longer than that. I've known oh. craps for almost two years. <laughs> oh, that's right. It was last... Mm -hmm. it was, no, it was over... Just over a year ago, because... 
it's been 18 months. Can I finished my dice class in December of 2015. I said over a year, and you said almost two years. It we is are almost two years. We are both right. Stop Yay, being math. pedantic. Math. Oh my god, I'm going to slaughter him. <laughs> That's not a confession if something happens in the future. So anyway, I learned craps. And he's been trying to teach me this game since he learned it. it and it's just not sinking in. It's not, it is not an easy game. It's not easy to understand. It's not easy to play. But he has been talking about the strategy for what he would bet if he were to play craps since he learned the game. So a much so over that a she year knows ago. it as well as I do. So I've heard it so often that I know I know the strategy, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go play. I'm gonna go play craps. Uh, uh, you know, we're walking out of the the casino. I'm like, yeah, it's happening today. <laughs> So you went to the craps table, and you played craps. I nearly threw up on it. I was so nervous. It was not a pretty sight. Yeah, especially because of how crowded the table was. So, so busy. Which is typical for a $5 craps table, let's mm -hmm. be honest. But I played for approximately 8.3 seconds. No, a little bit longer than that. But it wasn't much longer than that. And I walked away. I bought in for... Bought in for 40. 40. And I walked away with 51. It's a win. $11 Come on. Give, profit. give it to me. He thought it was only two. He walked away. He said, yeah, you made $2. It's 11. So I went in with 30 and I came out with 71. I am so pleased with that. That is my level of gambling. I And I'm, I'm still like shaky and nervous about that level. So I'm uh, a gambler. I am not. But hey. I came away with something. Woo! That means we paid for dinner. Woo! Woo! And it was fun. It was fun. I mean, that's the only reason you should be gambling is because it's fun. Yeah, I can't play there because I work there, but I can go with Joe while she plays. That's true. And that's just as much fun for me because it is, if nothing else, it's a very social thing. Yeah. You're there, you're talking to people, you're having fun. And the games that we like tend to be more so on the social side yeah. anyway three They're parties if you're, social oriented. Yeah. if you're trying to if you're trying to find a game to get into gambling at a casino at a table game uh three card is absolutely the easiest to learn but three card has the i, th I think the the kind of people who go to that table tend to tend to be like the, the nicest and the most sociable and like the she less she hasn't met the belligerent three card player yet well if there's only one that's a good that's a good ratio so now we have to go home and clean Yay, cleaning! Woo! Clean! Squeaky clean. Let's be honest, though. We might just end up playing Breath of the Wild. Woo! Cleaning! Probably. Let's be honest. Okay. Okay. So, Joe, what are we making? So, we have some friends coming over to play games tonight. Board game night! Woo! No more woos. <laughs> All the woos. And I always like to prepare some sort of snacky foods. Um, so that we have something to munch on when we're playing. People make the best strategic decisions when they're not hungry. So that gives me the opportunity to try some new snack food recipes that I find. Uh, and today, we're making flautas. Um, I, I cooked up a bunch of chicken breasts, boneless, skinless chicken breasts in the crock pot. Probably about two pounds. I cooked it on high for about four hours with a little bit of chicken broth. No other seasonings or anything. And then when they were done, I just put all of the chicken into my blender or my uh, mixer with the paddle attachment and just mixed it all up and it shredded all of the chicken really finely. If I were, if I wanted to cook the chicken like that, it would be perfect for salads, uh, but I probably wouldn't shred it because it shreds so finely. Um, but it would be amazing for salads like that. But it shredded finely for this, and um, then I took half of the chicken from that and mixed it with a block of an eight ounce block of cream cheese, about a half a cup of salsa verde, and some cheddar cheese. So, what I'm going to do now is take some flour tortillas. So it's not an exact science about how much you put in here, um, but maybe a tablespoonful. And just spread it out. If you were to use corn tortillas, 
rather than flour tortillas, you would be making taquitos. Um, we used <coughs> we used corn tortillas last night with the other half of this mixture, and the corn tortillas ended up splitting in the oven. So this is a kind of an experiment to see what happens when we use the flour tortillas to see if the same thing happens. And just roll it as tightly as possible. Um, and just put it on your baking sheet with some parchment paper. And I'm just going to use up the rest of this mixture to make as many as I can. The second appetizer I'm going to make, we are calling buffalo bones or buffalo chicken bones. So the other half of that chicken that I cooked up and shredded in the, the mixer, I mixed with another block of cream cheese, some uh, shredded cheddar cheese, and buffalo sauce. And this, I'm just taking a, a tube of crescent rolls. These are big and buttery. I don't think it really matters. Just don't get any of the sweet ones, because I think that would be weird. Um... <laughs> it makes it makes me jump every time. I don't know why. I know that it's going to happen. I know that it's going to happen. And yet still it makes me jump. Okay. So just unroll these. These are going to be very flaky. Okay. There's two in here. And this is just one of those things that looks messy until it's done, but it ends up looking just fine. So, again, I take just about a tablespoon of this mixture. This is cold, so it's a little bit more moldable, but plop it down in the largest section of the crescent roll and just just get it covered. I mean, you take I took take these two ends and I fold them in, and then the long end I just wrap around the outside. If there's uh, any spots that need a little extra coverage, I can put it there. Uh, and then I just make sure all of the holes are covered. And you can do one of these numbers. This is where it gets the sort of bomb ish shape. And they go on the baking sheet too. So I'm going to do the, that for seven more. And again, I will show you what they look like after they're done. And here's what they look like when they're done. This one crisped up really nicely on an unexpected and unexpectedly. So I will probably serve these with either blue cheese or ranch, depending on what people want, but uh you can serve these if you've if you've made these a little on the spicier side. Um, I would serve these with like sour cream. You could also serve them with guacamole or a salsa, um, or you could just eat them as is, which is uh, probably what I will do.